Welcome back. I'm going to refurbish this Canadian General Electric single phase motor. First step is to remove the pulley. Clearly I won't be unscrewing this nut that someone has mistaken for an anvil. That shouldn't matter though because it looks as though it is just part of a two piece pulley. The shaft out of the motor will be a key to press fit. It's always worth a little tap, just to see if this will be the first ever occasion that something just slips off. A gear puller easily dealt with the pulley. Now, I purchased the drill press from a professional mechanics workshop. They were offloading it cheap because the motor had stopped working and given off a burning smell. I didn't test it on the machine, but I do want to try and run it on the bench without any load. The cable I'm disconnecting originally went to a relay and onto the Ford reverse switch. To quickly test the motor, I'll just wire a new plug straight in and switch it at the wall. I'm expecting smoke, so I'll be quick on the switch, as I don't want to cause any further damage to the windings if there's a short. Um, okay, job done. Thanks for watching. No, so the way the guys I purchased it off described the issue was that the motor would struggle to get going and stall. Although there's nothing obviously wrong with it, the most likely fault is a capacitor, which is what gives a single phase motor that initial kick to get going. There is some inertia to overcome throughout the drill press that it doesn't have to deal with sitting on the bench. Or possibly there was a short somewhere else that unshorted itself on the 200 km trailer ride home. There's plenty of dust, but nothing jumps out as being a problem. The bearing feels old, but not to the extent that it would cause an issue. There are only about three wires, but as a matter of habit I tag all of the ends. It's good to know with certainty that you can wire something back the way it was when it last ran. Here's the capacitor. You can see it has spewed a little bit of crud. One of the terminals has also come into contact with the case at some stage. I'm not going to test the capacitor, I don't have the equipment to do that. And besides, capacitors are cheap, so I'll just chuck a new one in. The bearing on the closed end of the shaft was easily removed. The bearing on the drive end would have been as well if my gear puller was just a wee bit longer. I have a collection of various devices for pulling and spreading and compressing, but not an actual gear puller long enough. I attempted a couple of munter methods, but in the end I bought a longer gear puller and pulled the bearing in the car park outside the bearing supply shop. There doesn't appear to be anything else obviously wrong.
You don't want to go to town with any old solvent to clean out an electric motor. These windings are sealed in basically varnish, so brake clean or paint thinners, probably not the best idea. And soapy water is no good either, unless you have a method to dry it out of the windings afterwards. So this is the product I'm using. It's a little expensive, but it is precisely made for the job. With everything relatively clean, it's time to remove the paint. I have always used dichloromethane based strippers. That's the normal kind that bubbles off paint in a few minutes. It's pretty nasty stuff. I thought I'd try this new kind. It's slow acting, but supposedly biodegradable. I later got hold of the data sheet and it's basically just antifreeze because apparently ethylene glycol can be classed as biodegradable. The only downside is that it takes hours to work, but assuming I can plan things to leave them sitting overnight, I actually like it a lot better. It removes basically everything with one application. First I sprayed the parts with a black zinc primer. There are dents in the side of the motor housing. It's the point that bears weight if the drill press was ever laid on its side. I know this is going to send some of you into spasms of disgust. I am going to use filler, even though it doesn't really need it. Please express your rage in the comment section. This is the capacitor housing. It's a little beat up. It sort of hangs out prone to damage, and I guess it's been clipped a few times over the years. I could try to patch up the little holes, but for that I'd need the same thickness of steel. It's 0.6mm, which I don't have, plus it gets really fiddly trying to repair tiny patches. So instead, I'm just going to slice off the existing tabs and weld in new ones. It won't look exactly the same, but I think that's okay. I'm using a skinny death wheel. It's less than 1mm thick. I really like these actually, though they do tend to shatter, especially if you catch them on a sudden edge. This is 1.2mm thick steel, which is a bit of a stretch for old tin snips. This is the plate which gives access to the electrical connection. I'd like to save what's left of the wiring diagram if possible. This was made as an industrial product so a perfect fit wasn't really a priority, but we can improve that with a bit of filing.
I'm not going to go to any great lengths to salvage the wiring diagram, but I will stick the worst of the peeling down with a touch of super glue. I've changed paint types. I'll mention that in more detail in an upcoming video when we paint the main castings. So anyway, the parts were painted and now they are shiny. The nuts and bolts were all in pretty good condition. Most of the plating was intact. The motor was originally painted after assembly, so I dunked all the bolts in paint stripper just to get the bulk of the paint off. Next, I've polished them clean with a wire wheel. I try to avoid hard wire brushing hardware. It does leave a pattern on the surface. I'm trying to minimise that by using a fine brush and a handheld drill, as opposed to a wire wheel on a bench grinder. The rotor has a little surface rust. I'm just going to treat it and leave it be. I think we're about ready to put everything together. Starting with new bearings. These are sealed low friction bearings. The drive bearing goes on first using a convenient piece of drill press as a drift. It goes on easy just with a light tapping from a soft hammer, so I wasn't worried about damaging anything. The end bearing is easy, though because there isn't a good way to hold the rotor assembly in a vise, it is a little awkward. At this point I was a little lazy and just tapped the two halves together with a rubber mallet. Someone gave this mallet to me a few weeks back and it's not like I inspected it until it took chunks out of my new paint. And there it is. Classic joke. Leave a couple of nails in the end. That took a little touching up. It's impossible to see now that the paint has dried. Still, I should have been more careful. I'm using the through bolts to draw the halves together. The fibre washers are just temporary, 
so that the paint doesn't get carved up underneath the nuts. Next I install the new condensatori. Italian. Fancy that. At least it'll work for a couple of hours in the morning. Ha <laughs> ha! I thought about using the bracket that came with the capacitor. I decided it was easiest to just blob on a couple of spots of hot glue. The capacitor can't go anywhere, but this will stop it rattling around. And it's easy to peel off the glue if it ever needs changing. As far as wiring, obviously the motor will be wired into the drill press at the end of the project. But this will be a lame video if we don't get to see something spin. So again, I temporarily wired in an old plug. Okay, let's see how she goes. Uh, okay, let me fix that. <laughs> 